Hello, welcome to a new episode of uh, learning basics in OCI. So today I'm going to focus on the block volumes. So what is a block volume? A block volume it is the hard drive where you're going to install the operating system or you're going to, let's say, install your applications, yeah, run different applications in OCI and so on. So when you're going to do a demo like this, yeah, what the first thing that you need to do, we need to create the, let's say, an instance. Yeah, so let me create an instance. I'm going to name it block demo. Yeah, I had previous ones created also that those ones I deleted. But now I'm going to continue with this one. I'm going to create an Oracle Linux 8 machine. I don't need too much resources. So one of CPU is more than enough. In here, I need to create a work. I can select an existing VCN. So I'll select demo VCN one. Uh, usually I create everything in private subnets, but at this point I want to make it public. Yeah, because I'm going to delete again after the demo and in here, yeah, I will assign my public IP before address. If I want to create one and I want to, let's say, reserve it, I can unselect this and after that I can put it uh, as I need, but I'll leave it right now to give me another public IP before address. In here, I will need to add SSH keys. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to upload an existing one. It should be this one. It's an older one, but still working. Okay. And in here, I'm going to specify the boot uh, volume size. Initially, it's 50 GB, but I'm going to make it 100 GB. And I'll show you also how easy it is to extend it. The boot volume performance, yeah, I'll leave it as 10 VPUs. But as you can see, you can also increase it as you want. One thing that is really important, yeah, there is a difference between boot volume and block volume and the difference is based on this performance, okay? The ones, uh, the disks that are used for uh, boot volume do not need very big performance, yeah, to have it onto, into it, yeah? So that's why even if I'm increasing the size of the boot volume, yeah, up to one terabyte, you're going to see the maximum number of IOPS is 50,000 IOPS and the maximum true speed is 680 megabytes on uh, when i'm going to create uh, a block volume yeah, i'm going to show you how uh, you what what is the the real speed yeah, that can be done on uh, a block volume yeah, not on a boot volume so i'll leave the encryption in present as it is in there i can also encrypt uh, with the key that i manage but i don't have them i will not add any block volumes at this point i want to add them later and what i'm going to do i'm going to press create after yeah, we press create in here, yeah, everything is created in the back end. You see most of the things that are here are paravirtualized. So what I'm going to do next, after the machine is created, yeah, I'm going to add a block volume. So how I'm adding this, yeah, I'm click on, uh, yeah, in here, attach block volumes. I click attach block volume. And in here, I can select a block volume, yeah, that is created, yeah. If it is not created, I can go and I create uh, another one, okay. So that's why I'll go, I'll wait for this to be created. And until it's created, I'll go to the storage. In here, I'm going to create a block volume. Okay, I'll click create block volume. I'm going to put block demo to the name of this. I'll leave it in the same compartment in demo one. And in here on the size, yeah, right now it is one terabyte if we don't need this for the demo. But as you can see at one terabyte with 10 VPUs, maximum size yet yeah, is the default size in OCI is to 25,000 IOPS and 400 megabytes per second. As you know, yeah, if we need more performance, you can increase it on the fly. You need to be to have the proper policies on the machine and the file system Yeah, uh, should have it in there properly but you can increase it and you can go to 230,000 IOPS and 1.8 GB per second yeah so that's a lot now as you know everything is NVMe based so if we're gonna increase it to 2000 yeah the size of the drive we can get up to 300,000 IOPS and 2.6 megabytes uh, gigabits per second yeah as a speed so yeah really nice uh, capabilities in there also, if you're not using it, yeah, you can detach it and you're going to have a lower cost one. Yeah, the number of uh, IOPS is going to be 3000. Yeah, so the price is going to be very low. But anyway, yeah, we're going to use this one for now. We're going to put it at ba as balance as 10 and I'm going to create them. Yeah, I will talk about the cross region application after. Yeah, we have this in there <laughs> already created in there. Now, yeah, the block volume is created for sure until now. Yeah, the instance is also created. So I'll go back to the instance. I have in here the public IP that was given to me. Uh, it is in public subnet. 
So if it's you are not able to connect, you can go in there and you can check the security list and you're gonna see that port 22 is allowed from everywhere. Okay, so that is good for me at this point. I'm not uh, gonna create another security list for the uh, list for this. Yeah, uh, it's not another security group. Yeah, sorry. So in here, I'm gonna press SSH. I'm gonna use mobile for connection because uh, basically the terminal they requested the same thing. Yet you have proper permissions on Windows, not only on Linux. So in here, the default user for Oracle Linux is OPC, and I will specify the location of the private key. So let me go, it's going to be also in downloads, I'm going to select this one, I press OK, and I will accept. And now I'm connected here to the block volume. So first thing in here that I can go, uh, let's say df, the command, what I can see here, as you see, I have SDA, SDA1, yes, so it is the boot volume, I can see the different size of the data and so on. So. Uh, what uh, you remember yeah um, I created a little bit bigger yet yeah, the file uh, size of this uh, and as you can see we need to also extend it even if the file was attached uh, from the beginning yeah we need to also run a command to extend it yeah so what we can do in here uh, let me go to this file boot volume yeah so it is wow and put it one terabyte okay so what i can do in here uh view boot volume details yeah so in here if i want to extend it yeah usually it was giving me the command yeah if i'm doing the resize uh and all of this uh let me go to the boot volume, add it, let me increase a little bit the size, let's say with two. Yeah, I cannot decrease the size, yeah, I can only increase it. After I'm doing this, yeah, they're gonna give me this command. Yeah, so if I'm gonna do a resize of the file, yeah, I, will, I need to run after that this command. Yeah, so I'm gonna do a restart. So if we're gonna run again df, you can see that the file was increased. Yeah, the, the the size of the file and everything that you see it in there. So um, in here, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> it was not <laughs> decreased. Yeah. So what? I, let me also go and see and run additional. Com yeah, I just updated. Yeah, in the back end. Yeah, we know that the file was increased, but the OS still does not know the real size. Yeah. So it's still one terabyte the file. Uh, yeah, it was done at the beginning, but as you can see, even if I have all of these, yeah, SDA one, two, three, yeah, they're still small, smaller in size. So there is uh, uh, an utility, so that is called uh, OCI Grow FS. So I can run this command. I will confirm that I know what I'm doing. And now, if I'm going to run again this, as you can see, SDA three, yeah, that was the initial partition was increased yeah so right now we have the one terabyte yeah, that we we wanted to have it initially okay so this is something very simple yeah you can do it uh, we also have this oci grow fs uh, in the oracle linux for ubuntu you need to go to github uh, look for oci utils and after that you're going to have the file in there now yeah so this was a basic resize of the boot volume that we have in there Okay, now let's go a little bit more further and we have created the block volume. Yeah, the block volume is usually where you install your applications. Yeah, because if something happens, you can destroy the operating system, the boot volume, create another one and reattach that one. So in here, I'm going to select the block volume that was created. As you can see, yeah, I can put the attachment size. I can, it is by default para virtualize. I can put it, let's say I can select in here vdb yeah, oracle uh, vdb access i want to leave it as read write okay i'm not gonna put shareable or something like that because i don't need it at this point okay now i'll click attach okay uh, and uh, after that yeah when uh, the data will be we need to go to the machine and see if it was attached in there yeah so 
I created quite big data, so <laughs> yeah, I don't need terabytes in here, so it usually takes a little bit more time when I have this, but I'll destroy the machine and recreate them in all of this. Okay, still waiting for it. Okay, so it's green, it is attached. So LS, uh, LSBLK, yeah, you're gonna see the only SDA at this point. I'll run it again, and right now I have a two terabytes drive that is put it on SDB. Now, uh, what I want to do, let's run uh, the fdisk command to create the partition itself. So sudo fdisk uh, slash dev oracle oci slash oracle vdb. Let's put it this time. Yeah, so in here they're gonna see it. It's asking me, um, yeah, if I want to create a new partition. So yeah, let me put it new. In here, I want to make it as primary. Yeah, so it's gonna be the default. I press enter. The partition number is gonna be one. Again, leave default for second. I leave 2048 as it's in there. Last second the same. And uh, right now it's gonna be a new partition and the size of two terabytes. So last step that I need to do in here is to write W for ROM write. Yeah, partition table has been altered to reread. Now let's go again LSBLK. As you can see, the partition was created. Next step that I should do is to format this partition. Let's see, so sudo mkfs and minus T. Let's make it extended four. Okay, and now again, dev oracle oci slash oracle vdb1 let's put it in here so yeah i'm gonna create everything as default the journal and everything that we need and at the end yeah after this is finished yeah so again let's put it let's be okay yeah we have the partition everything is put it in there properly uh and it's formatted now let's do something like create a mount point so let's do sudo mkd minus p slash mnt slash volume one okay so next step will be sudo mount slash dev okay it's oracle oci slash oracle vdb1 slash mnt slash volume one okay so now we have this and uh, if we're gonna put it uh, all of this yeah as you can see you have a mount point of two terabytes into this location so i can go cd yeah so ll i don't have anything in this file yeah so even if you put in this folder yeah i only have this and now the u minus h yeah so i don't have the permission yeah i want this on the folder and everything so looks okay now if you want to do the automatic map, ma uh, mapping uh, what you need to do uh, you, you need to go to etc slash f stab yeah, and in here, it's sudo, sorry. And in here, you can go and you can define the. I should give a command, no? Okay, so in here, you can go and you can create, uh, you can tell uh, where you want to map it, how you want to map it. You see, dev map where uh, you put the volume one, and that's it. Yeah, so you can take a look on how to do the mapping and so on on the internet. So yeah, right now, yeah, we have created the block volume. We have a block volume, put it in here. Uh, we have also an object store uh, and a uh, boot volume that was extended. Now we need to take a little bit, let's say, look into the capabilities of a uh, block volume, maybe from the disaster recovery perspective. So what you can see here, we can create backups for these block volume files and we give it a name. It's gonna be a full backup or it can be incremental backup. It's your choice and you click create backup and this is it as simple as you see it in here also the fastest one if you want to do something you can create a clone when you create a clone you're going to be able to increase the size of the file yeah so if it's going to be two, two terabytes you're going to go let's say you can make it to 
25 or something like that and you create the clone and from the clone you can create a new instance uh, much faster than from a backup and the third part yet is from the disaster recovery part yeah so we, what you can do with this you can go and you can uh, create the replication yeah so you can create a replica from this part and uh, uh, select the location where you want to put it yeah so uh, it is uh, let's say recommended to have replicas for uh, um for the blood vlog volume and also boot volume because if something happens yeah in one region you can go to another region and you, you from there you can uh, you, you can create them yeah you see here you have this option cross region replication you click on it you go down at this point and you enable it this cross region replication even if it's, it's called cross region yeah you can also replicate it in your own region that you have yeah so in my case I'm not able to do cross region to US because the fastest one it is in London. So I should have been, let's say, uh, subscribed to London, not to, to Ashbourne. But I wanted to have into different regions for other use cases. You can go, you can also open an uh, SR2 Oracle to increase the number of uh, regions that you can subscribe. But I didn't need it, so <laughs> I don't have it right now. So as you can see, you can enable this cross region replication, you save the changes, and the data can be, let's say, replicated to a different availability domain or in a different region. Okay, so high level, this is an introduction to the block storage. You've seen it, how easy it is to use it. You have additional options, let's say, maybe when you're gonna have uh, tens, uh, hundreds, yeah, thousands of group volumes or of uh, backups of block volumes or something like that. What you can do, you can go to the volume group, you give it a name to that one, you select where the, you want to host this. Yeah, you're gonna select the volumes that you want to use. You can be, let's say, you can do different ones. Yeah, for block volumes, for Bastion, uh, for boot volumes, and so on. Yeah, you can put all of these and you can create a policy that will replicate all of them, not just um, one by one. Okay, so yeah, you can also have this option to do it. Yeah, you can put in a different availability domain and so on. And uh, yeah, you can also apply backup policy if you have one selected in there and so on. Sorry about this, but uh, <laughs> yeah, there, there are a lot of options here yeah, that you could use uh, for the blog volume. So if you have question, you can add it uh, yeah, under the video and I'll try to answer. Anyway, yeah, thank you very much for uh, watching this. Yeah, uh, this was a little bit longer than the others and I think I'm gonna go with uh, this format because um, it, it gives the capability, it shows more, let's say, insights into these capabilities. So thank you for watching and see you on uh, the next uh, video. Thank you. Bye-bye.